Hey everyone, welcome to Microbial Metabolism. This is chapter eight. And so we're going to be going over metabolic reactions within um, microorganisms. But let's first talk about what metabolism is. So all cells, whether you are a microbial cell or you are a eukaryotic um, human cell, you have to be able to accomplish two basic things to survive. And that is you have to be able to produce your own energy so that you can then build up different pro uh, products that your cells need and break down other products. And so the synthesis of new cell parts and the harvesting of energy can be summed up into one term, and that is called metabolism. So metabolism, in a nutshell, is the sum of all of your chemical reactions within a body cell. And this is just a cute little cartoon about, you know, your metabolism, and slow metabolisms typically are associated with um, lose or gaining weight. And so that was a little chubby cat. So I thought it was adorable. All right. So again, what is metabolism definition wise? It's all the chemical reactions that occur within an organism or within a cell. And they can be broken into two major, pro, um, major categories. The first is called catabolism. Catabolism is the breakdown. So we're breaking molecules down and when we do that, we release energy. So here you have a catabolic process. You start out with all of these, this larger molecule with four different um, subunits linked together. We break them down into individual monomers, right? And that's a catabolic re reaction. And in that process, we release energy. The energy we release is ATP. So then anabolism is going to be the opposite, where we're building up. We take these small subunits here, and we add in energy. So there's the energy we add in. And we're going to build up these large polymer of whatever objects they are. In this case, they're little blue balls, right? But they could be amino acids that are building up a protein, or they could be glucose building up glycogen. So any type of small molecules building up something larger is an anabolic reaction. I always remember anabolic and catabolic by catabolic has the word cat and if you have ever seen cats cats like to jump on counters they jump on cupboards they jump on anything and when they jump oftentimes they will knock stuff off so sometimes the things that they knock off are things like glasses or plates and so cats tend to break things when they jump so a catabolic reaction breaks stuff down. So I always remember that cats break things. That's how I remember it. And then anabolic is the opposite. And if you've ever heard of anabolic steroids, they build up muscle. So um, the opposite of catabolic is anabolic. And I just remember anabolic steroids. All right. So like I just mentioned, a catabolic reaction is a reaction in which we are breaking something down and we are releasing energy. So a catabolic reaction, because it's releasing energy, is an exergonic reaction. These two reactions go hand in hand. Exergonic reactions are reactions that have more free energy um, in the reactants. And so the energy is released. So you have a lot of free energy up here and the energy is released. 
okay? Whereas an endergonic reaction is linked to your anabolic reactions. They go hand in hand. Endergonic reactions are reactions where the reactants have less energy, and so you have to have an input of energy. And so the products have more energy than the reactants did. And so in this one, energy is taken in. You have an input of energy. So always remember, catabolic, and endergonic, or and, I'm sorry, and exergonic, E-X-E-R, go hand in hand. They are together. And anabolic and endergonic go hand in hand. They are linked together. So I'm going to stop this video and I'll get into um, different organisms based on their energy and carbon source in the next video. Bye.